A lot of people underestimate the power of publishing. And there's, I think now there's a little bit more light being shined on it because um, there's this whole thing in hip hop like, does this person write their own raps? And now, you know, when you go on Spotify, you can see Genius and it, it, now they're counting how many names are on the, on the song. And um, I just think at all costs, protect your publishing. Touring can be the most lucrative aspect to an artist's career, but the only thing that will feed your, your kids, that will feed you very well, feed your kids, their kids' kids, and their grandkids, probably even, my great grandkids will probably eat better off of the songs that I write today than I am because publishing is equity and it grows over time. So that never goes away. And now you, see, you do see a lot of artists who don't write or do, who don't have the songwriting ability trying to tap into that publishing and asking for that, and, which I don't think is fair, but they're trying to tap into that because that's the only way that you can sustain the type of lifestyle that comes with the music industry when you are touring at your, at your peak and at your prime, but when you can't tour no more and you can't do hostings and stuff like that, and your body is like worn and tired, the only thing that keeps going is your publishing, that you get those BMI checks, those ASCAP checks keep coming. And God forbid, a song that probably made you a million dollars or $500,000 in 2018, somebody can literally cover that song, like how Whitney Houston covered, a lot of people don't know that um, I Will Always Love You by, Do um, by Whitney Houston was a, is a Dolly Parton cover. You know, that was a Dolly Parton song. And Elvis actually went to her and wanted that song from her and he wanted a certain amount of publishing, and she said no. And he said, no one's gonna ever make this song bigger than me, I'm Elvis. And she's like, well, I, I, I don't believe that that's true. I believe in the song more than I believe in you. And look at that, like years later, Whitney Houston, which is like, the, probably like still one of the number, longest number ones of all time. Like, so I'm, I can assure you Dolly Parton made more off of I Will Always Love You when The Bodyguard came out than she ever did. So can you imagine that? Can you imagine a song making you $500,000 and then like randomly it goes in a movie and now it's like you're getting upwards 10 to 12 million dollars from that song because it's it's in a big movie or it's it becomes this huge copyright that they're using or it goes in a commercial or that's literally like a stock you just need a couple of those and it'll keep coming and it'll it's faithful it comes to three to th th at least three times a year. Definitely should be more if it's not go that mean, if you don't take out any advances from BMI and and, uh, and stuff like that. But like your publishing is the most important aspect. I feel sorry for people who don't write. And I saw something from Jimmy Iovine. He was like, the only artists that will sustain and last through this change right now are the are these self-contained artists that can write and in some aspect kind of produce their own music and sing their own music and tour off of it. Because with streaming, it's not, there's not, it's not really, it doesn't really all the way make sense for someone to write for another artist. Because radio is in a weird space right now. It doesn't really make sense for me to write for, an, like for me, I personally have this new clause that if they don't really stream more than me, it doesn't really make sense for me to give them the song. Whereas in the past, I would just give them a song because I wanted to meet my MDRC at Sony. <laughs> so, and that, that when, when you sign a publishing deal, they give you an advance based on how many songs you have to turn in. People just hear, oh, they, you sign a publishing deal for three songs or two songs. That's, that's not true. That's two or three complete compositions. So every time you, you hear somebody write a song, if they got 10%, 5%, 20%, that, that's how much counts towards that. So you have to get 100%. So you can sign a publishing deal for three songs and have to write 75 songs before you fulfill that three song, that three song um, quota, you know? And then you gotta recoup what they gave you because that money ain't even gonna come to your bank account. I just say protect your publishing at all costs. Don't take any advances that you don't necessarily really need because you'll feel stupid if you spent, you know, $20,000, you know, at, at Barney's or like um, Neiman Marcus and those clothes are out of style you know, like two years later, and you're still paying with interest towards, you know, an advance you took out just to blow, you know, on a car that depreciated or whatever like that. Now, I will say definitely advances, the, the advantage of having advances is um, you, you have that a lump sum in cash in your hand that you can invest back into yourself.